So what is a nation? Or maybe I should say, what's the difference between a nation and a country? Well, a nation is a group of people who have the same heritage, culture, language, values, but they don't necessarily have a government. Whereas a country is a geographical area that has a central government. You can have many nations within a government as long as each nation subscribes to allowing the centralized political government to rule them in certain areas. This can be seen by the fact that we have Navajos and Iroquois nations, we have the Sioux Nation, the Cheyennes, and so on and so forth. And you'll just look at the map and you can see where they are. And this country is made as a nation of, as a country of immigrants. When uh, the Poles and the Germans and the Italians came here, they formed conclaves of people that had the same heritage background that they did, but eventually began to migrate out into the greater society and fit it in. These days of wars in the Middle East, we're getting a lot of refugees from the Middle East who are not coming to ascribe to the American idea, but they're coming to avoid completely unlivable conditions in their homelands. However, here's where things get a little screwy. The people coming in don't come from societies that have a concept of secular rule. The Poles, Germans, and Italians, you know, all of these Euro European people did. The Middle Eastern refugees have this concept that their religious leaders are their secular leaders or are their government, so there's no difference between their religious leaders and their governing authorities. These people don't want to assimilate because that would mean giving up some of their national character, it would be giving up their religion. Now this is not a great problem when you look at the map and see where the Muslim communities have formed and where the most immigrants are. Locally it's a bit of a problem because they want Sharia law, they want uh, a theocracy in their own conclaves, they want to shut out uh, their national you know, country government rule and authority, and this has been done to a large extent in uh, Europe, which the press tries to downplay that it's actually happening, but people on the ground will tell you it's absolutely true. So what do we do about it? Well, sooner or later it's going to have to be addressed. Sooner or later somebody's got to stand up and talk about it and do something about it, because otherwise it leads to an internal civil war. Not that America had, doesn't have a civil war in its past, it does. But we seem to be coming up with another civil war. We have uh, nations that I call the red and the blue nations. And this map is actually the electoral map showing you what counties voted red, Republican, and voted blue, Democrat. These nations are ideologically very opposed to each other. And that's pretty understandable. Uh, the blue areas are heavily populated city areas and the red areas are less populated suburban and rural areas. The populations between the two is similar. However, the red area covers a far, far larger geographic space. Now it's pretty understandable that people who have a background and heritage of independence and personal responsibility and pioneering attitude uh, would want to vote for that kind of ideal that America was founded on, independence, personal responsibility. It's also quite understandable that the people in the highly populated areas would want to vote for a more socialistic, top-down, control the government will supply your needs sort of ideals expressed a lot by the Democratic Party. Reason being is that people in the cities cannot fend for themselves. Individual responsibility is a hard problem in the cities. They can't grow their own food, they can't come up with their own transportation quite often, and they can't generate their own or collect their own water. So they are dependent on government services for transportation, for water, for sometimes for housing, for their food. Of course, you have a really contentious situation. Supposing the Red Nation, which supplies most of the water and the food, decides that they're going to cut off the blue nation and let them starve. Is that going to happen? Well, no, not in America. But the conditions are there that should this come up, it could happen. 
and we can starve out the blue nation. But this is not the only way that this country is divided into nations. Even in our entertainment industry, we have divisions where there are shows that are popular in the South that are not popular in the North. There are shows that are popular in the Midwest but are not popular on the East Coast. And I'll leave you with this, the Duck Dynasty Nation. <laughs>